Hey, what's going on? So I'm just gonna do a quick video here today. So I was doing some tests. I noticed a lot of people are using like cameras, stuff like that in their, uh, in like ISO and shutter speed and things of that nature. Let me adjust the mic real quick. Yes, yeah, so I've noticed a lot of camera settings and camera specifications like Sony's and Canon's and stuff like that. Uh, from my tests, here's what I'm finding. I don't think that does anything uh, at all. Uh, some people say it does something with style. Here, we'll just go through these real quick. Uh, these are just generic prompts or, you know, just little random stuff. Terrapunk Warrior holding a weapon. Shot on a Zeiss Supreme Prime 35mm T at T1.5. This is a one of the most expensive lenses for cinematography that you can get. And looks like this, right? We're getting some quality here. I did a little Twitter post about this, but I'm, this is going to go into the greater detail. So look, this is just with that. No camera specification. And I did a lot of other tests before this. If you do uh, signify like a red camera, it'll just throw red into the image. Um, yeah, see here, this is the upscale. Uh, looks pretty good with that Zeiss, right? Okay, let's find another one where we start messing with it. Now this is where we start telling it the camera, a Lumix. I see no difference in quality here. Now you might say, oh, well this one looks a little different, but really we can find one in here that looks like the one in there. So it's giving us some kind of a variation of different things with w what appears to be a cinema lens, right? This is what it, it seems to be showing me. And I found that just 35 millimeter T1.5, any millimeter works, then it doesn't actually control like the shot or anything. You might think like a 35 would give you something like a uh, medium shot. 35 millimeter is like what's most natural or comparable to like the human eye. Um, and then like a 50 you'd start getting like this or you'd want to use a 50 for something in this range And then like an 85 and hundreds and stuff. We're gonna be doing like portrait uh, photography and stuff with that or like Telephoto shots it starts getting telephoto range at that point and I wanted to test that and I did and to see if there's any kind of Compression in the background. It doesn't appear to be um, And no color now. Let's go further. Let's look because you might be like well, okay, but it, you're you are specified specifying a Zeiss, right? I don't think so, because, uh, but I, I could be wrong here. So look, I start doing lots of variations. Shot on a Nikon, 50 to 300 millimeter. At, this is a cheap lens, right? It looks the exact same, uh, the exception of this weird variation with the gun, but I chalk that up to um, what, you know, random. And we're gonna go into the other settings right now too. Look here, so, we shot this with a Zeiss Supreme on a potato with the lens smashed into it. And whoa, that potato looks good. But you might be like, well, it's the Zeiss then, right? It's the 100 millimeter. And it does kind of go in. See, like I was talking about, it kind of does that where it's giving us more portraiture type shots. So maybe the maybe the millimeter is doing something here. I didn't test that uh, too much, but let's see. Now this is where we start to get into other settings. And this is where I'm gonna go and show you just a few things real quick about ISO, if you didn't know. So ISO is like this, this basically. As you introduce more ISO, there's more grain in the image. And then I'll just give you a brief, brief summary, right? ISO is the light sensitivity of the medium used, whether it's film or digital. When you change the ISO setting on your digital camera, you're making it more or less sensitive to light, okay? Uh, oh, that was much further up on the screen, so it's up here. Uh, that's the definition, and so you'll see this noise start to get introduced, and some people want these noise uh, artifacts, right? Or filmic grain and stuff like that, but, uh, and I've seen people prompt ISO, and look, in this, 6400, and we're seeing no grain whatsoever, at all, in the background. There's no grain. So ISO is doing nothing. So I did a bunch of different ISO tests. It really has no effect. Even put F22. You can't really signal your iris. I wanted to make this dark. I'm trying to purposely over and underexpose things. This is ISO zero, no light, super dark. And still, it's giving me perfectly exposed photos. And that's where we're gonna get into shutter right now. I start doing Panasonic mirrorless. It does have variations um, in style, but I think that might be coming from film grain and motion blur on wings. So let's go a little further. More uh, potato shots. This was shot on a pancake 35 millimeter with a lens uh, potato. So I'm gonna wrap this up. So I gotta go find the shutter stuff. I believe it's way down at the bottom. 
he, and then here, I'll show you one other thing. When I take off any specification of uh, the millimeter of the lens, the focal length, it starts to give us essentially like cowboy shots, but I only did a few tests on that. But it does seem like this is where you get more of like this kind of shot, where it's like kind of between a medium and a full. Here we go. So here, look, um, ISO 100. So this was pretty good, you would think, but I was doing lots of tests. Now we put ISO up to 6400, uh, no grain on the image. I put the shutter speed at 1 48th of a second. These wings, um, to be still like this, would require uh, 1 1,000th 1, of a second. So this is doing nothing. What I'm getting at is I don't think that a lot of this camera prompting is doing anything. Uh, I think we can simplify our prompts as we go and um, have less style drag and really understand kind of what's going on here. And I don't mean, I'm not even trying to be critical. I could be wrong here. Um, and I'd love to see like any kind of like people that have like style guides on like, you know, something that you can actually show in a red because reds or like a Canon or a Panasonic or a Sony. These all have different color profiles. Just look at these. These are this is a red versus a Canon, and I'm gonna go into the actual thing to a picture of an eyeball, and you can see this is the same eyeball. Look, there is a difference between these cameras and these lenses. That um, unless you've shot on a lot of different stuff and gone in and done color timing and editing, another thing is there's no log profiles, uh, which I'm sure in time Midjourney is gonna have all of this uh, popping up and we're gonna actually be able to signal it as if we were shooting on uh, a camera and be like, yeah, I want this shot at F4 and I want this on with shutter speed. But for now, I think describing the image in uh, plain human language, like motion blur on the wings, or even using like GPT, ChatGPT to get your prompts here, let me go over there and just kind of show you what I mean. So uh, I'll wrap this up, I'm kind of meandering. All right, that's, I'm just gonna wrap it there. So have a good day, later.